Remember when the riots and lootings happened in Minneapolis after uh, the death of George Floyd? I always have to pause before I say George Floyd because I think of the Prime Minister Lloyd George. Uh, but it, after the death of George Floyd, there was the riots and looting in Minneapolis. And Donald Trump said, this is looting. And when the looting starts, the shooting starts. This is the mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot's reaction to what Donald Trump said. This is cut 18 at the time. His goal is to polarize, to destabilize local government and inflame racist urges. And we can absolutely not let him prevail. And I will code what I really want to say to Donald Trump. It's two words. It begins with F and it ends with U. Now, that's a tough code, but people who voted for Lori Lightfoot might just be able to figure that one out. So this is what she said yesterday after her city, the luxurious shopping district of her city, was utterly trashed by violent looters after a, an armed gunman was shot in a running gun battle with the police. It was just lucky it wasn't the police who got shot. It was the bad guy. And that started the rioting, the looting. This is cut five. These individuals engaged when it can only be described as brazen and extensive criminal looting and destruction. And to be clear, this had nothing to do with legitimate, protected First Amendment um, expression. What occurred in our downtown and surrounding communities was abject criminal behavior, pure and simple. And there cannot be any excuse for it, period. This is not legitimate First Amendment uh, protected speech. These were not poor people engaged in petty theft to feed themselves and their families. This was straight up felony criminal conduct. So those teeth in your ass, Madam Mayor, are are the teeth of reality biting you. I mean, what's what's the difference between what happened in in Minneapolis and what happened in Chicago? There is not. You know, here's what here's what a Black Lives Matter uh, leader said about the looting. This is Ariel Atkins, a BLM organizer, according to NBC Chicago, uh, said, I don't care if someone decides to loot a Gucci or a Macy's or a Nike store because that makes sure that person eats. This is reparations. Anything they want to take, they can take it because these businesses have insurance. So in other words, the same BLM people who were rioting in Minneapolis when Trump called them rioters are the same people rioting in your city when you call them rioters. It's, It's true. It is true that the death of George Floyd looks much worse than obviously the death of an armed gunman. And we don't know exactly what happened yet. A new video has come out. It throws some doubt on it. It looked, it looked, still looks to me like reckless policing, but still, and, and cruel policing, but still, still just because uh, something like that happens, just because an injustice happens, doesn't give people the right to loot and riot and terrorize the rest of the citizenry who after all had nothing to do with it. It had nothing to do with it. And, you know, the thing is, the aldermans in uh, Chicago, they have this system where they have ward wards and they have aldermans in each ward. They know what's going on. They've been trying to complain to Lightfoot forever. Here's Anthony Beal of the Ninth Ward. The city is in total unrest. Uh, In my opinion, I think the mayor has lost the confidence and the control of this city. Um, you know, she's listening to the wrong people and the wrong people are the ones that's really, um, you know, leading this unrest in the city of Chicago. You know, the aldermen are the ones that are elected by their constituency, and there's a total disregard of listening to the aldermen who know the pulse of this city, know the pulse of their ward. So this is the same mayor, by the way. Remember when she was told by uh, Chicago alderman Raymond Lopez uh, that this was he was worried that local you can't rely on local church congregations to keep the peace between rioters and the police. And she said, you're full of S and they started cursing at one another. She has not been listening. She has not been listening to her aldermen, who are actually the people running the the sections of the city. This woman is with Bill de Blasio, two of the worst mayors in the galaxy. There are planets, seriously, there are planets watching us from a distance going, I don't know, I've never seen a mayor that bad. They really, these are terrible, terrible mayors. And mayors, you know, mayors have a responsibility. They're supposed to fill up the potholes. They're supposed to make sure the subways run. They're supposed to make sure the garbage is picked up. This is what they're supposed to do. If you are not controlling the rioters in your town, you are a bad mayor. And so the thing is, in, in Portland, where they were blaming federal agents for the tear gassing going on. Now they have riots and now things are being set on fire. Set up, buildings are being set on fire with people inside, which is just attempted murder. 
And now here's the thing, uh, cl- classic reactions. These are the things I love. I, one of the reasons I love talking about politics is because the absurd makes me laugh. This is one of the things that is probably one of my ugliest characters. This is a character trait I'm going to have to explain to God at the last day. I'm going to have to say, yes, I was laughing at that abject corruption that was destroying the country. Something about it just cracks me up. What I love is when confronted with reality, it really is like um, the mentally ill. The mentally ill are just like this. When they're confronted with reality, the villain becomes the person confronting them with reality, not the fact that they were wrong. You know, if you tell people, no, Martians are not speaking to you through your teeth, it's like, you know, you just don't understand what the reality. So here is Lori Lightfoot now being asked if maybe, perhaps, her lenient attitude toward violence before has led to an escalation in the rioting. This is cut 16. It, it almost sounds as though you're saying this is, the reason we have it is because the courts and the prosecutors were not doing their job, that they were going too easy on the looters from the last time around. Is, uh, am don't, I don't take you? it from me. Greg, let's be clear. I mean, don't bait us, okay? No, I, I this just, is, no, uh, don't, I don't, don't, do not court. bait us. Don't, do not bait us. This is a serious situation. People are concerned about their safety. <laughs> don't bait us. Don't bait us. You know, remember when Donald Trump would say to these guys, you're fake news. The new, This is not the news. The things you're saying to me aren't happening when he was right. And they said, oh, this is, this is a terrible threat to the First Amendment. It's a threat to the First Amendment. This is not not like a, an unserious thing, like telling people they can't go to church, but telling other people they can riot because you like what the rioters are saying, but you don't like the pe- the person that the people in church are praying to. That's you know that's not a threat to the First Amendment. But telling fake news people like Brian Stelter and Jim, uh, look at me, I'm Jim Acosta over at CNN, telling them that they're fake news when they're fake news, that's a threat to the First Amendment. I love that. Don't bait me by asking me a hard question. Just like Nancy Pelosi said the other day to Judy Woodruff, a liberal reporter, if you ask me a tough question, you're basically uh, playing for the other team. You're playing for the other team. So as reality bites back, as reality takes its revenge, as reality speaks up, which it always does, the gods of the copybook heading always come back with fire and fury and slaughter. When that happens, they just have nothing to say anymore except shut up and shut up. And you remember all of this, you know, the guy in uh, Chicago, the police chief in Chicago, James Craig, points out the fact that so many of these things, so many of these riots, and this has been true since the 60s, start with a lie. They start with a lie about the police killing in the first place. This is cut 17. One of the things that we saw here in Detroit, almost eerily similar to what happened last night in Chicago, a false narrative was perpetrated by these criminals very quickly and indicated that a unarmed team was shot and then called for people to come downtown to loot. The one similarity is that the criminals tried to do the same thing here in Detroit about three weeks ago when our officers were fired upon and we ended up using deadly force. They put out a false narrative that we shot an unarmed African-American man seated on his porch. Totally false. So that, I said that was Chicago. That's Detroit. He was talking about Detroit. But, but this is the thing. You know, the same thing has been true of almost all of these killings is we don't get the full information. And sometimes they're a bad killing, but it's very rare. It's very, ra- very, very rare that it's just some racist guy going, I'm going to kill you because you're black. It's always some kind of discrepancy. I mean, even with George Floyd, there, the guy was full of drugs. He was resisting arrest. We don't know the full story yet, and we won't until the trial. But it's always like this. You never have the right to riot. Never. Do you have the right to riot and loot unless you're starting a revolution? In that case, the administration has the right to fight back. Before you go, one last thing. Hit the subscribe button so that you stay up to date on all our content.